Now let me make it very clear as to why I'm running for governor against Chris Christie. I'm running for the very reason that the first 50 minutes of this meeting was devoted to. Those of us who understand the danger that this country is in know that if something does not change very quickly, everything that Americans have built up in 400 years is going to be gone in less than 50 years. And we've already been starting that process for 50 years. This could be gone in as little as five or 10 years. Mm -hmm. These are critical times. And so I am tired of going to meetings to complain, to whine, to talk about how we don't have any respect, we don't have any money, no one listens to us, our meetings are too small. I want to put an end to that. And there's only one way to get respect. Anybody see uh, the movie called The Godfather? Yes. How did Vito Corleone was a uh, little store clerk. Nobody respected him. Uh, a couple years later, he was the godfather. Everybody respected him. So what did Vito Corleone have to do to get respect? He had to whack Don Fanucci. Right? <laughs> Since he whacked Don Fanucci, everybody respected him. That's why I'm running against Chris Christie. Now, maybe I won't knock out Chris Christie. But if we come close, if a little guy schnook called Seth Grossman with no money, no organization could go up against Chris Christie and almost knock him off, then people will say, gee, if only the Tea Parties have gotten behind him, if only we spent more time talking about the primary election than some other activities that we do, if we actually talk to our kids, talk to our relatives, talk to our neighbors, we could actually take our country back. And that's why I'm running for governor against Chris Christie to show that it is possible. Now, of course, uh, I don't want anyone to take my words out of context. I don't want to whack anyone in the sense of <laughs> killing anyone or violence. Because thank God the people who gave us this great country, our constitution, our system of elections, means that we can get rid of people with power without killing them, without hurting them, without threatening them. We have this system called elections. And by the way, until America came along, the only way to get rid of somebody in power was to kill them or use physical force. You know, David had to whack Goliath. Until that, he was just a farmhand, right? Uh, everybody has to knock out somebody, but we have the system of elections. So how is it possible to do that? We're a small group. We don't have the money. Uh, I am not taken seriously by the Asbury Park Press or any other newspaper. Why? They say, well, you're not a serious candidate. Well, what do you have to do to be a serious candidate? Well, uh, you need at least a million dollars in your campaign fund. Well, how do you get a million dollars in your campaign fund? You have to take money from the people who are killing the country, right? The people who get the, uh, the insider bailout on the corporate side, uh, the people on the union side who said you have to... Uh, hire them and their company even when there's no money to do it. So we built these things like the Revel Casino, which is a failure unless you're one of the contractors, one of the union contractors that got the, uh, a, a year and a half of work out of it at double the normal rate. So then all your people could go on unemployment for the next two years but keep paying their union dues. It was such a failure for them that it was a success for them, and they want to do another one. They want to do the, uh, the American Dream Mall. Uh, they're talking about all these new projects they could do by raising our taxes, by raising our debt, uh, and by putting us into some sort of uh, indentured servitude so they can continue doing what they're doing. And, and I'm actually running with someone for state senate in Atlanta County who pointed out something I didn't notice before. They said, uh, she said, uh, Mary Beth Bennett, she said, uh, every time I come to a red light at the intersection and I look at the cars around me stopped at the red light, whenever I see a brand new car, I usually see a government worker or a union business agent. And when I see a beat up car, I usually see a self-employed carpenter or a self-employed plumber or somebody who's trying to make a living without a government handout. And it's like they have become the new royalty, the new ruling class, our so-called public servants. And that's what I'm fighting against. If we've got to restore America, 
We've got to have respect, and we can't have respect without political power. And you can practice by pushing me, Seth Grossman. Uh, that, like, that I don't exist as far as they're concerned. I hear Christy and Bono, Christy and Bono. And isn't that very convenient, by the way, when Christy says, oh, uh, Barbara Bono, she's so left-wing. You know why? They designed it that way. They did, do you think that Steve Sweeney, the head of the Iron Workers Union, and Ray Lesniak and all those Democrats who are burying this state with debt and taxes, and by the way, do you notice the hidden taxes on your electric bills? Oh my yes, God. Yes, we know. Do you know Societal that? Societal benefits, that's my pet peeve. Uh, and, and did you ever notice that, bucks. That, that every time you have a politician that does oh. a dirty deal and ought to go to jail, they get rewarded for that dirty deal by being put on the Board of Public Utilities. Yeah. So they can then put all these hidden taxes in our electric bill. But the thing is, besides our, our you know, we have the, uh, you don't really notice how high our electric bills are, by the way, until you, until you talk to your friends in Florida. And you see the air conditioners running all the time. You say, oh my God, that air conditioner, that electric's probably costing you a fortune. <laughs> they say, are you kidding? It's cheaper than it was back in Jersey. Well, how's that possible? Because our rates are about two to three times what their rates are, right? Because we have the hidden tax for the societal benefits fee, which means free electric for illegal immigrants, basically. We have the, uh, the, the uh, market transition fee, which basically means that every time the electric company was forced to build do-nothing projects to hire union workers on stuff that didn't have to get done, the electric company makes a big profit anyway. Uh, and then we have the, the part that you don't even see. Uh, it, it's called your generate. It's called your what is it? Non-utility generation charge. Mm -hmm. Was that paid for? Oh, all your friends with the solar panels. Uh, every time they produce six cents, uh, rather every time they produce six dollars worth of electricity, we have to pay them three or four hundred dollars. Did you know that? No. So oh that's why God. your electric bills are so high. Mm -hmm. It's a racket, and Chris Christie is into that, mm -hmm. so he could talk about his commitment to green energy. So anyway, it's outright theft. But again, nobody's talking about it. But, but again, by having Steve Sweeney and the, and the Democrats put up Chris Christie, and all the Democrats are supporting Christie, right? And then they put up a super left-wing Democrat to try to pretend that Christie's a moderate. He's no moderate. And uh, all the people who went up for the Second Amendment rights uh, saw that today. That where was Christie? You know, he wasn't He was, he was in the right. FBI. Yeah. All right. So anyway, I don't want to go on and on. I just want to give you uh, some idea of what we, we can do. So again, uh, what I hope you will do is I hope that every one of you will vote on June 4th and vote uh, for, for, for me, Seth Grossman, in the primary election for governor against Chris Christie. So I need your vote on June 4th. I also need uh, you to get other people who normally don't vote in primary elections. And this is a, a ticket. Uh, for practice, because if you could get a hundred people who never vote in primary elections before and say, hey, I, I know you never vote in a primary election, try it this time. And by the, by the way, the mechanics, you'll hear, well, the Republicans picked this one, or the Republicans picked that one. That's baloney. If you look at Title 19, the electric, election law, uh, it used to be in the day, anyone see Boardwalk Empire? Nothing mm -hmm. Johnson, yeah. He was the political boss of Atlantic City. And back then, the Republicans used to meet in one hotel and pick their candidates, and the Democrats used to meet in another bar and pick their candidates. And it was all crooked, it was all corrupt. And so 100 years ago, they changed the election law and said from now on, we don't trust the parties to pick the nominees in these conventions. We, the only way it's legally possible for the Republicans to pick their candidates is in a secret ballot election called the primary in the first Tuesday of June. That's the only way to pick it. So when you hear, well, the Republicans picked this one at a convention or the chairman picked this, nonsense. That's the propaganda in the newspapers. You, the voters, pick the candidates in the primary election.